Oh man. They're going to make it even more awkward from now on to bring us out into our room. Ah, Lucy's adventure has been added to the challenges! I wonder when we're going to start with the challenge runs. Hmm. Would be fun! It would be fun. No, but seriously, they're making it harder and harder for me to consciously bring Asa into our run because it's pretty clear that he has serious problems with her father. Her recently discovered father. And he kind of encourages her to push forward in order to, to kill him. I, I, I can't really approve of that. No matter how cool his skills are, I can't really approve of that. <sighs> Asa. At the very least, I need to bring him into one more run, right? At the very least. We are still lacking one clover. Trisha is also lacking one clover, so I probably should bring both of them at the same time. But before we worry about that, <laughs> we have another lore part today, right? After every run, they're going to give us a bunch of new reports. And this time around it was one, two, three, uh, only three. Oh, that shouldn't really take that long then. And then we can worry about a saw! <laughs> oh yeah. I want you to look at that. Development team record between Klein and Asar. Well, what were they talking about? Asar is creating a virtual world program for the ARC project. Klein thinks very highly of Asar's talent and asks why he became a game developer. Mm hmm. When they still got along, huh? Oh yeah. Now, if we remove all of this stuff and build the program, hmm, how do you like it? I can't believe a game engine could be this realistic. This is amazing. Azad, did you say you were making a fantasy game? It is fantasy, but it is all based on reality. Most users prefer the world to have as many realistic elements as possible. But if you remove all of the unrealistic aspects, it wouldn't really be called a game at that point. That's true. No, on the contrary, we need you to do exactly that. If it's you, I believe you can make it. A world more realistic than the real world. More realistic than the real world? I don't think that I'm that good. No, I only speak the truth. This level of quality, in just a testing phase, I was right to hire you all along. Well, um, thank you, sir. So the backbone is completed now. Let's call it a day, shall we? Uh, no, no, I can do a bit more work. It's kind of fun since it feels like making a new game. <laughs> Azar, can I ask a personal question? Of course. Why did you become a game developer? Um, what do you mean? Your talent is incredible beyond words. Don't you think it's a bit of a waste to spend it solely on creation of games? In this day and age, it's hard to find a field that doesn't use virtual reality. With your talent, you could work in many other fields besides gaming. Well, the reason that I make games is partially because I enjoy games myself, but... It is so fun watching the growth of people who play my games. The growth? The most meaningful moment in a human's life is facing a difficult challenge and overcoming it and growing as a person. That is what I believe at least. Right now, humanity is facing a challenge, are we not? The Ice Age, right? The global cooling phenomenon and an art project to overcome it. Is that the reason that you immediately accept my offer? A challenge of an unprecedented scale, with the entire human race at stake. For me, it was an offer that I just couldn't resist. It's been too long since I felt like I've hit a giant wall that I couldn't overcome. <laughs> well, that's an interesting mindset. Very well. If it's you, I can trust you with the task ahead of us. 
Well, that's a relief. <laughs> Anyways, I think those things are essential for humanity. But not everyone wants to take on a challenge. Afraid of failing, those people avoid life's challenges and actually stop growing. I want those people to realize the meaning and excitement of overcoming a difficult challenge and growing as a result if you play on hardboard, for example. <laughs> or if you play a Dark Soul game, right? Awakening that spark in people's mind is my purpose in life. Humans shine the brightest when they're facing with a challenge, after all. So is this the reason why he uh, wanted to create this looping world based around the game? I mean, he did mention strategy and the growth of Lucy that was motivating him to uh, teach her a couple of tricks here and there and even started to teach her the, the way of the sword, right? Interesting, but at the same time it must be suffering for him as well because he's surrounded by people actual people that he knows of as people who just don't display any growth for hundreds of years right for hundreds of years because of his own damn fault and decision with phoenix and the betrayer in the cell and actually speaking now that i think about it there's a high possibility that osar was in that cell right because let's be serious everyone was frozen the only people who could technically avoid the whole freezing aspect and probably memory loose thing is probably the people who had some kind of different avatar, so it had to it might have been a czar. Unless of course they freed one person particularly. But why would they do that? Unless of course No no, I don't really have a reason. It might it it might have been a czar. But then I wouldn't really understand why he was tempering with his own memories. Hmm. Nevertheless, from P oh no, Peter, a call between Klein, the executive manager of the Ark Project, and Peter, CEO of Nova, before the dead. Klein realized Peter's acting strangely. Oh, why is that? Whoa. <laughs> well, but there's nothing much he can say back. Oh, this is not gonna be good. Oh no. Oh no. Hello? Hey Klein. My one and only friend. Um, Peter, I was just about to call you too. I'm sorry for not calling you sooner. It's been a busy day these days. <laughs> Is the project going well? Oh, of course, it's going smoothly. Good to hear. Um, how about you? Anything new? Klein, did you hear the news? News? Oh, I don't know. I didn't really have the time to check the news. And it's hard to get recent information these days with the whole broken internet part and electricity, right? Someone set fire on my house. What? Why? Are you hurt anywhere? I'm fine. I wasn't at home at that time. What about your family? Is your family safe? No. They weren't as fortunate. I've become alone overnight. <laughs> My condolences, Peter. Who could have done something like that? He was arrested on the spot. The culprit was one of my employees who left several years ago. What? The employee couldn't stand the strict company regulation and left on his own accord. He must have had a grudge against me at this time and decided to act on it when the media released the half-baked truth. The thing he said after he got caught was something else. He said he was only carrying out justice. Because of that justice, my innocent wife and child had to die. Wait, wait, the media? Justice? What are you talking about? Klein, do you really not know anything? The fact that we disabled the temperature sensor on the BH-1412, the entire world knows of it now. 
An anonymous informant leaked it to the entire world, although in the media it was presented as a defect in the triogenetic devices. Well, anyways, that is why I'm now the most hated person on Earth. Well, um, cheer up, Peter. Not everyone hates you, right? There are many people who still believe in your project. Also, we have the support of the United Nations. Uh, nations, I mean. Oh god. Uh, don't worry about the public opinion. The negative crowd will always be the loudest instead of the positive one, like always, right? <laughs> I know. That there are people who trust us. I know that too, but... Peter? What if we took a different approach in distributing the triogenetic pots? If everyone knew about my project from the beginning, then we wouldn't have been able to save anyone. Our cryopods can't wake you up, but there's a virtual reality project next door, so leave your fate to them. Who would have volunteered to go into a regular pot if we said that? You're right, but... Listen, Klein. Do you remember that project? The one about building an artificial sun inside of a dome? What do you think happened to them? As soon as the media caught wind of it, people from all around the world wanted to take part in it. Everyone wanted to survive, so they fought each other to the death for a spot in the dome. Key researchers got caught in the riot and lost their life, and the project was suspended because of them. Do you understand what I mean? The reason why our project is going smoothly is because no one knows about it. Likewise, there would have been no issues if people didn't know the shortcoming of the triogenetic pots. The media just couldn't keep their mouths shut. Nothing would change, even if you told the truth. The situation might get better on my side, but not on yours. In the end, no matter what we choose, it's impossible to satisfy everyone. I made my choice knowing these things could happen, and I will never regret it. Are you sure you can handle it? If there's one better option I can think of, it's no but joining your project from the start and not distributing the pots. That way, I wouldn't have been hated and my family would still be alive. In that case, we wouldn't have been able to save most of humanity. Of course. We always tried our best to save as many people as possible. I have lost everything. But we have opened a path for everyone else. Even if the cryogenetic pots cannot wake you up, there are still people who are willing to partake in cold sleep. Just like you said, there are still many people who believe in us. From here on out, it's all up to you guys. Will they put their fate in cold sleep? Or will they freeze to death? Peter, you're also planning on cold sleeping, right? Huh? The current situation is unfortunate, but please hang in there. When everything is over and the Earth is back to normal, we can tell everyone the truth. Then everyone will understand and you'll be hailed as a hero. Perhaps. But in that future, my family wouldn't exist to cheer me on. I... Klein, I think I'm a bit tired now. I need to take a nap. Peter, don't worry about me. I'll be just fine. You should pay attention to your project instead of me. There's still some things left to do, aren't they? Klein, you are the only hope for humanity. I, I see. Rest well, my friend. I hope we can see each other again soon. Oh, shoot. Oh, no. Oh, no. I think he knew. The moment he mentioned his family, Klein probably knew. <sighs> oh, they really went too far. They really went too far. No matter how big of a grudge you have, you should never try to kill somebody, especially if you have no information. You dragged innocent lives into this. The woman didn't do anything, and the child, especially not. 
But I guess the core worker didn't really care about that. He hated that guy for years. But I wonder why. Was he able to find a different job? Surely it wasn't as lucrative as his old job. Without the stress. Surely he could have started new. And then... We have the reunion of a century! <laughs> That's between Klein, right? Yes. Phoenix, who had not been frozen the entire time, reunites with Klein after 150 years. With the outside temperature rising, Phoenix joy at completing the ARC project is short-lived and is replaced with an uncomfortable feeling that life in this virtual world will soon come to an end. When Klein says that the project is definitely moving towards the end, Phoenix is reminded of the lost sense of reality. Because they already spent hundreds of years alone! I'm actually quite surprised that there's even a sense of sanity left. Hmm. Okay, let's see what happens. Is she able to tell that uh, it was a work? There's a possibility for that. Hey, Phoenix! Klein! <laughs> well, I noticed you weren't in the pot. I see that you were already awake. Were there any problems you noticed with free- Oh, Clyde, I really missed you! Uh, Phoenix? Whoa! What's wrong, Phoenix? You're acting like it's been a long time since we've met. Ah! I thought we wanted to hide it, Phoenix! What is that about? I know you were emotional, but you need to rail it in! <laughs> Damn, I was trying to be careful, but it's been so long since I've seen him that I forgot for a second. Klein is unaware of the fact that I didn't freeze. Mm -hmm. Well, you're not wrong. It feels like an instance for us, but more than an actual century has passed in reality. Around 150 years, I assume. Oh, yeah, that's right. We've been sleeping for so long. Man, do I feel stiff after all that sleeping, right? <laughs> So how's the situation? Ah, here. I already compiled it for you. It's the temperature data from recent weeks. It continues to rise on an upward curve. Also, all the rare, there's been a faint sunlight observation for the clouds in various regions. Interesting. Then the reason why we woke up is... Yeah, the temperature is reaching a level where humans can actually survive. The great catastrophe is coming to an end. It's a good sign. Hmm. That is good news. But this is far earlier than I expected. How about we analyze the data in more details? Oh, okay. Hmm, okay then. But then again, seeing how we still have to wait, it probably wasn't the time. The great, the great catastrophe, catastrophe is coming, coming to, to an end. end. We have, we have successfully, successfully survived the catastrophe, the catastrophe and, and we can, can now return, return to our lives in the, the warm Earth. Earth. The still life, life inside, inside the virtual, the virtual world, world will soon, soon, soon. What, what will happen once this life inside, life inside the virtual, virtual world, world ends? ends? What then? My sense, sense of reality is finally waking, waking up after a century of forgetting. forgetting. What, what is, is this feeling? feeling? These, These dreadful, dreadful and eventful, eventful days, days are finally are coming, coming to an, to an end, 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 and we and will soon become the saviors of humanity. Even so, so, I... Hmm? Phoenix? Hey, Phoenix! Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, what's up? I told you that I finished analyzing the data three times. O oh, already? I I'm sorry, I guess my mind is still fuzzy from sleeping so long. <laughs> so, uh, how are the results? Can we go out to the real world? Phoenix. I'm sorry to ruin the mood with this announcement, but the Great Catastrophe is not over yet. What? I've tried running simulation based on the data collection from the observation equipment and the current outside data. The bottom line is, what we are seeing is only a temporary phenomenon. The temperature is estimated to drop again starting as early as next week. Oh, a temporary phenomenon? Erratic temperature shift during the global cooling phenomenon. I'm sure you heard of it before. I'm well aware of that, but this one... Indeed, it broke an all-time high. 
but it's only that, a phenomenon created by a coincidence of various environmental factors. It's essentially no different from the volatile temperature shift we've seen so far. I see. Then how long do we need to, uh, wait? Well, there's no way to know at the moment. The data that we have now is still highly insufficient. In order to produce a meaningful estimate, we need to face several more of these climatic changes and gather more sample. Ah. Well, don't be too disappointed. Once we collect a bit more data, it will be possible to tell when we can get out. It's just we lack the proper data to know that right now. Then what do we do now? Are we freezing again? No. I have a suggestion, Phoenix. From now on, how about we set a timer to wake up every 10 years? T 10 years? Yes, even if there are no major incidents, it will still be a good idea to collect data periodically. We'll be able to get more accurate calculations that way. We've held out for 150 years, so I guess 100 years should be nothing more than a nap. Don't you agree? Uh, yeah. That's good and all, but, uh, Klein, you seem all excited right now. <laughs> is that so? Well, even with all that happened, the time is passing in our favor, and the project's definitely moving towards the end. That's a good thing, isn't it? Of course I'm happy. Look at that slight smile. <laughs> the end. Now, if we're both in agreement, let us return to freezing. See you in another decade. Ten years. Oh, God. Phoenix. <laughs> Unable to freeze. Error code 1412. Terminated. You know, at this point, I'm kind of surprised that even after 150 years... He never attempted to fix the machines that might possibly recreate his original form. He had time to build towers of paintings, but didn't attempt to fix the freezing problem even once. Oh god, Phoenix. Oh god. As soon as, as, soon as I came out of the cryogenetic, cryogenetic pot, I immediately I checked on Klein's condition. condition. Klein went into freezing with a similar expression as last time. However, I could sense a tingle of relief in his face, and he even looked a bit happier. Hmm. Hmm? Well, even with all that happened, the time is passing in our favor, and the project's definitely moving towards the end. That's a good thing, isn't it? Of course I'm happy. The end. Huh? I, I feel, feel a bit, a bit strange. strange. Ever since I met Klein again, I've been in a bad mood. Why is that? There wasn't a single bad thing that happened. As Klein said, the time is passing in our favor, and time will solve everything for us. Right? Does it though? That's right. Time. The time I have left. It may seem eternal, but it's far from that in reality. In the end, yeah, my fate is to one day disappear along with the art project. I already knew. I was determined to see this task through, and I thought I had overcome it. I thought I could gladly sacrifice my life for the sake of humanity. However, when the temperature started rising and the end of the great catastrophe seems near, what I felt more than anything was not joy or relief. Rather, it was fear. That's right. I feared the end of the great catastrophe. How comes? It was such a boring life that I wanted to get over with as soon as possible. So how comes that I'm feeling more fear than happiness? I do realize that this temperature increase was just a phenomenon. That there's still a long way to go until the great catastrophe is finally finished. But Klein mentioned that the project is definitely moving towards the end. The existence of an end means it cannot last forever. It's no use. I can't seem to calm down. Should I go visit the 
Dead person? No! J just for a moment. I'll chat for just a moment until I calm down. No! What are you doing? You should never go to that person! You know that! The worm! He's worming his way inside his heart! <laughs> what are you, why are you doing this to yourself? It's not helpful, it's just gonna make it worse! And besides, everyone has to end someday. Everything that's good has to end. That's the circle of life! Sure, you were able to avoid it for 150 years, in your phoenix body and all, in a digital world. But even that has a limit. The hardware is getting old. The connections are getting slower and slower. And at some point, the batteries and solar panels are going to burn dry. There is even an end to a program in a PC, right? Everything at some point has an end. But then again, I guess after living such a long life, maybe he forgot about that. And now he became afraid, even though his time isn't even near yet. There's still 400 years tops ahead of him, or maybe even more. Who knows how long the ISS is going to last? Oh god. Two more fights until the change of the world. That's probably the meeting with the betrayer and then uh, the, the deal probably and then suddenly the, the world changed and, and then we have a couple more reports afterwards and a couple more reports beforehand. Oh god, Phoenix. Oh, man. Oh, by the way, though. I have a password. Actually, I have two codes for a password. Wait a second. I need to pull it up again. So, okay, I have two codes, 1412 and then 12, or rather 2173. 1412 might be a little bit too short, so how about if I add both numbers together? Do I need a space? I might need a space. Can I add a space? I can't add a space. Okay, 14, 12, 21, 27, 3. Okay, that didn't work. How about 21, 27, 3, and then 14, 12. 21, 27, 3. Is that it? No. 14, 12. Yes. Okay. But what's up with 21, 27, 3 then? And what did that do for me? Friendships? Did that fix something? Okay. Never mind then. Let me try to figure something else out. How about if I turn it around into 37212? No. 2141? No. Maybe if I mix them together. Two, one, one, four, two, one, seven, two, three. No. There has to. Why, why do I have a second set of numbers if it doesn't react? Twenty one, twenty seven, three. I can't... no, I can't add spaces. I can add letters. D, H, B. Can I shuffle them around to make sense of it? Probably not. But there's so many ways how you could reshuffle numbers. You could cut them in sections. We shuffle them together into different numbers, categorize them back into letters, drive them backwards, move one set forward. I had I have, I have seen so many different ways to decode stuff. <laughs> okay. I hope Google is right. I have no way to actually prove if this is actually the binary number of 21, 27, 3, but it might just work. Never mind. 
How about this? No. Okay, I have no idea. No clue whatsoever. But did something else change? Oh. Memory data, huh? Research records and dreams. No preview whatsoever? Okay. Well, that's interesting. What's that about? Seems to be extra glitchy, though. After successfully identification of human memories, I decided to conduct some more research utilizing this data. Memory data exists in the same form as memories stored in the brain. Memory data is created by simulating the complex mechanism of a human brain, and thus it is difficult to modify the data in any way. Below are the current known methods of altering human memories via manipulation of memory data. 1. The removal. If memory data is removed from a person, all of the memories will be lost. Therefore, the person with removed memories will exhibit infantile behavior. Duplication. By copying a person's memory data, it is possible to store all of the memories in a separate database. This copied data can be used to reverse a person's memories to the safe state or add additional memories onto it. Interesting. Free addition. By adding saved memory data onto a different person's memory data, it is possible to inherit the memories of others. However, this process can lead to side effects such as did or other severe mental impairments, so great cautions must be exercised. This may make it seem like addition of memory data is impractical, but I have found an application for it. That is, if a person's memory data is added onto their own memory data, there are no issues. By adding stored memory data onto a person suffering from memory loss, it is possible to recover their lost memories. And there were no notable side effects observed during this process. Okay, so is this how the safe state of memory data works and why Phoenix and Azar and of course the Forgotten King are able to keep their data, even though they're reverting the entire world? They just add the current knowledge on top of the previous knowledge. That's actually quite interesting. I should have read that. Oh god, I'm stupid. Even if we have succeeded in converting memories into data, it is not known exactly how the brain stores and reads the memories. This means that the data is in strict accordance with the biological rules of the brain, and it is impossible to perform a precise change such as altering or removing certain parts of the memory data. It's impossible? On an ending note, these findings must be treated with the highest degree of confidentiality and pu a public disclosure will be strictly forbidden. It. Prohibited, I mean. Misusing of memory data research could lead to a major social problem which could lead to sizable stains of human history. This technology must not be treated lightly. Only an authorized and trusted minority should be performed to handle it with the sole purpose of advancing science of humanity. Although incomplete, this technology could greatly improve the lives of many in the unforeseen future. This concludes my research on memory data. Dr. Klein, neuroscientist. Oh. So Klein was actually a doctor who worked on on the brain on a regular basis, which would also explain why he had no issues hooking everyone up into a virtual world for thousands of years, right? But what's that about uh, causing problems for others and that you can't really delete selected parts of memories? Didn't Azad do that to himself so that he forgets about the deletion part? Or was he just suppressing their memories? That would also explain why he had some severe cases of headaches. But then again, wait a second, wait a god that second! Maybe it has something to do with adding memories onto someone who wasn't supposed to be the, the correct or the, the correct person? 
I mean, somebody was wearing a different set of avatars, right? Impersonating another person. And we saw three people. There was one person, the crystal, Asar, who forgot about his whole uh, development career and became the, the investigator Asar. That's a clear sign that somebody tampered with his memories. Right? Maybe... Maybe there's a mix-up. I, I kind of assumed maybe Asa was the betrayer, but maybe Asa was dragged into this. Maybe that person was impersonating him. Dragged him out, moved all of his memories onto him so that nobody has any suspicions and... That would make sense. That, that would actually make sense, because Klein said that a person holds the master permission, right? And we saw a person in the crystal who's currently sleeping. And you need to kill it in order to get the permission back to, to that for themselves. Interesting, very interesting. Maybe this is a whole misunderstanding. Maybe, maybe there's a whole mess <laughs> in the entire virtual world. That this is completely messed up. And there's also an explanation for the dreams from the looks of it. Okay, that might be interesting for Lucy now. Because she is frequently visited by dreams. We are currently in a dream world in order to access the archive from the looks of it, right? <laughs> dreams often serve as a wish for fulfillment for the many hopes we could not achieve in real life. Okay. During a dream, the mind is unable to recognize contradictions when unrealistic situations arise. And we are tricked into thinking that the dream world is the world we've always been living in. Upon waking up, our brain quickly forgets the events of the dream, but in some cases, it can remember a part of the entirety of the dream. Reportedly, in cases where a dream is consistent with one's reality, the dream can be misregistered as a memory that has occurred in real life. Hmm? I think they wanted to add something else into this. But it glitched out prematurely. A shame, because that was actually really interesting. <laughs> what about the third one? How do I get the third one? Ah, shoot. Is it the code? It has to be the code. What am I supposed to do with this? How do I get the third one? Ah, oh, 21, 27, free. Come on, give me a hint. Give me a hint. <laughs> 14, 12. Now, if we split them in two sections, it's an uneven number, which doesn't make sense. But if I split in in three, we have 21, uh, 211, 421, 723. Now, if we take the prime number of all of those numbers, we would get 12, which wouldn't work, which means this is going to turn into 3. And so I'm just going to add 4, 7, 3 and hope for the best. Oh my god! How about Lucy then? How about Lucy? Is Lucy a password? No, of course not. Did they mention Lucy's birthday? <laughs> <laughs> Does Lucy have a birth date? Did they mention that even once? I don't think so, right? It is a program made by Klein. He probably wouldn't include any personal data of Lucy into this. Oh my god. Oh, this is gonna haunt me the entire week if I don't figure it out. Oh my god, wait, wait, maybe if I talk to Asar, maybe Asar is going to give me a, a little hint. Huh? Give me a hint, Asar! I need a hint! Anybody, give me a number! Give me any number, I'm gonna check with everyone else. Maybe there's a number I can subtract, addition, multiply, or something like that, in order to get a different set of numbers, and I can motivate or modify even further to create a different set of numbers just for the sake of the last report. Come on! Anything! I take anything! Any set of numbers! Words would also work from the looks of it. I can, in fact, add a couple of words. The thing with words is though, 
It can pretty much be anything. Oh, shoot. Phoenix. Maybe I need to talk to Phoenix. Maybe I need to talk to Phoenix. Everyone is talking pretty much the same as before. Teach me? That might have been a mistake. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the tutorial didn't have any numbers. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot, I'm stuck. Can I escape? Can I escape from the tutorial? No, I can't. Oh, my God. This can't be. This can't be. I'm so infuriated right now. Huh? Oh, Lucy. Oh, Lorene. What's up? You have a number? <laughs> well, it's good to see you. Huh? Who? Ah, that's right. We haven't really met yet. I'm Lorreen, the head researcher of the Ark. Wait a second, what? What do you mean we haven't met yet? Lorreen? Ah, poor Lucy. I can't imagine what you've been through. Uh? uh it's nothing. Nothing at all. Alright, um, Lucy, the researchers are formally a subdivision of the information t uh, investigation team, I mean. We sometimes go down to the Twisted Land to analyze the terrain and gather ingredients for our research. Since I'm in charge of guarding the research lab, I almost never go down to the Twisted Land. However, if needed, I'll be able to accompany you this time. Well, that's new. Call me whenever you require my assistance. There's not much time left after all. Lorreen? That lady's weird. Secret reunion. What? <laughs> There's not much time left, but the research lab is still open. If you need anything, please pay us a visit before it's too late. What is up with that? What? What do you mean? <laughs> Wait. Did something change here? I don't see an upgrade for my pendant anymore. Money is power though. The damage equal to 2.5% of your current gold. I no longer need to donate, so I guess that is probably worth it. Massive incantation. Apply random skill upgrade to all skills in your hand for this battle. Cannot upgrade skills that are already upgraded. That sounds interesting. View two ally skills from the deck and discard pile, whose original cost is one or above. The selected skill gains swiftness, exclude, and discards after two turns. Duplicate it until your hand is full. Okay. Could I duplicate the flurry of Ilya? I might be able to duplicate the flurry of Ilya. I'm gonna buy the repeat. Then we have renovation, discard all skills in hand, and draw four. Another discard card, you say? This skill cost is reduced by one for every other skill in hand. Okay, that one sounds really good as well. Common skill harden. If cast on self, heal 10%, 2 of max HP. Healing gauge protection. Anyone could, ca could have this? For two turns? I don't mind if I do. <laughs> and of course money is power. Why not, right? Why not? Maybe, maybe it's actually, a, there's a point to, to hoard all of that gold from here on out, right? Technically speaking, we no longer have to carry around it anymore, seeing how we literally don't need to worry about the donation box anymore. But with this card, we might be able to do damage with it. Now, one little thing though, what was that about the secret reunion? Seriously? Did she just give me a, a new report? She did. It's between Phoenix and Klein, but I'm running out of time. Ah! <laughs> you know what? I already, I already recorded one part too much for this week. I would, I, I should, I should save it for next week. But, <laughs> this is mean. Now I want to read it. It's finally the meaning of a century. The betrayal. The 
can finally talk it out! Oh, good! Okay, I'm gonna make a cut. I'm gonna record one more part. Screw this. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna break my own rules. I'm gonna break my own rules for the sake of. for knowledge! Lore! <laughs> I need to get my lore. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys had fun in today's part. If you guys have any idea what I'm supposed to do with the number 21, 27, 3, please write it down. This is going to haunt me. I need clues. There has to be a second code. They wouldn't give me those numbers without a reason, right? Klein wouldn't carve those numbers without a reason, right? <laughs> okay. But nevertheless, I hope you guys had fun and see you in the next part. And then. Bye bye!